Wido. Go! You got this! Go, Masato! Go! I'm Yosuke. I'm just an ordinary businessman. On the weekends, I play cricket with my friends. Cricket was still a pretty minor sport in Japan, but I loved it. And it's how I met my girlfriend, Mizuki. She played for another team. She was a really good player. She was pretty famous among cricket enthusiasts. She was a beast on the field. But off the field, she was the quiet type. She usually kept to herself. I liked that about her too. I really enjoyed being with her. <laughs> good job today. Thanks. You too. Mizuki, she's so beautiful. She's even got a fan club, right? You're one lucky guy, man. <laughs> Thanks. I loved her so much. And just the other day, I asked her to marry me, and she said yes. Her birthday was in six months, so we decided to get married then. Life was good. Stop smiling like that. <laughs> You're going to introduce each other to your parents soon, right? Good luck. Yeah, thanks. First, we went to see my mom. Dad was no longer with us. He died a few years ago. So yeah, we're gonna get married in a few months. Congratulations, you two. Oh, here, I got something for you. She went into the back room and came back with a bank passbook. It had $20,000 in it. Wow, seriously? That's a lot of money. When you were born, I started saving up. It's not much, but... Thanks, Mom. I really appreciate this. The wedding is getting kind of expensive, so... Can't wait, though. I'm so excited! Same here! Can't wait! Now it was time to go see her parents. She lived with them, so I already knew them. Her mom was nice. Her dad didn't talk much. A few days later... I'd like to marry your daughter! I know you, Yosuke. I trust you. Take good care of her, yeah? Yes, sir! I was wondering when you two were going to get married. Oh, this is so exciting! You're having a wedding, right? Of course. We haven't figured out the details yet, but it's going to be the best wedding ever. Oh, sounds great. I cannot wait. You only get to do this once, so make it count, dear. I can't wait to see you in a wedding dress, Mizuki. <laughs> Thanks, Mom and Dad. But, uh, we're not very wealthy, so we can't really help you out financially. Sorry. Anyways, good luck to both of you. Can't wait. Thank you, ma'am. I wasn't expecting any money from them, so that was fine. We had some money saved up ourselves. Other than cricket, I didn't have a lot of hobbies. And I wasn't a big spender. So I had a good amount of money saved up. And her mom was always like this. So there was no surprise there. A few days later, we went to go look at wedding rings. There are so many of them. They all look great on you, Mizuki. <laughs> Thanks. I think I'll take this one. It's pretty. Mm, great choice, ma'am. This is a limited model, so you'll have to pre-order it. Could you fill this out? I guess we'll have to wait a while until the ring arrives. Oh, it's fine. The wedding is still months away. Yeah, I guess. So we picked out our ring and went home. But a few hours later... Hey, about the ring? I changed my mind. Oh, you found something better? Yeah, I want something... Better. Better? Uh, okay, sure. No problem. She wasn't the type to change her mind, but this is her wedding, so it's understandable. I didn't think much of it. Wedding preparations was a lot of work. We started looking at potential wedding venues. How many guests are you planning to invite? Uh, 30 or so, including family and friends, right? Yeah. In that case, your total comes around to... Ah! That's a pretty good deal. This is only an estimate, but if you want to cut some costs, you can make the invitations and nameplates yourself. Many people do that, actually. <laughs> Sounds fun. I see. I like it. We're still going to take a look around, but this place is my first choice so far. What about you? I agree. I like it, too. So we were in agreement. But a few days later, she called me and said, Hey, about the wedding venue? I want to do it somewhere else. Oh, I see. Everything okay? Yeah, um, can you come over to the house this weekend? Uh, sure. Okay. It wasn't like her. Something was up. 
Wait, maybe it's her parents. So a few days later, I went to go see them. We saw the estimate for your wedding. I think you can do better than that. Yeah, and you're only gonna invite 60 guests? This is Mizuki's big day! You need at least 100 guests! Each! What? So 200 in total? Yes, at least 200. And the wedding venue? You need to have it somewhere nicer. Your friends and family will be there, so... How about the wide hotel? Uh... But this place is pretty expensive, too. What? This place only costs $30,000! That's not expensive at all! It's her big day! Stop being cheap! Yeah, and the wedding ring, too! Yes, we saw the wedding ring you picked out. Oh, it's too cheap. You need to get her something better. Yeah, this is her wedding. You gotta stop being so cheap. Uh, okay. I need some time to think about this. Sorry about this. They're just really excited about this. Glad we have an understanding. We're counting on you. So her parents started sticking their noses in. I wasn't expecting that, but oh well. I guess it happens. They're gonna be my parents-in-law. Just let them be. I wanted to say something to them. But I didn't want to cause any trouble before the big day. So I decided to suck it up. Hey, I found the perfect place! I already made a reservation. We'll come with you. Whew, this is exciting. I can't wait. What?! Mizuki's mom made a reservation on our behalf. I asked my mom if she wanted to come, but... Thanks, dear, but this is your wedding, so I'm going to sit this one out. She said to me, Hello there, I'll be your tour guide for the day. Thank you, can't wait. Uh, is this your mother? Nice to meet you, ma'am. Her mom did most of the talking for us. We can't be cheap about the food. What's the best you've got? Yeah, we gotta do it big. How about this for wedding favors? This looks nice. With more than 200 guests, a $50 increase per person set us back another $10,000. And they kept going on and on like this. This was getting expensive. I can't afford this. I looked over at Mizuki. She didn't say much. Every time her mom asked her something, she just nodded in silence. Mizuki, um, this is getting expensive. I don't think I can afford this. They're just trying to help, you know? It'll be fine. Uh... If you still have time, would you like to try on some wedding dresses? Huh? Uh... <gasps> yes, please! Ugh! This was getting out of control! I'm gonna go get some fresh air. Okay! <sighs> what do I do now? I took out my phone. I had two unread messages. Huh? What the... It was a picture of Mizuki and some guy. That's Masato! He was one of my teammates! Hey, man. I saw this online. That's your fiancé, right? I wasn't sure if I should tell you, but... They don't even know each other that well. Wait, is she cheating on me? No, can't be. She'd never do that. I'm sure it's nothing. I was a bit worried, though. I went back in the building. They were picking out wedding dresses. Oh, this one's pretty. Uh, I guess. Her mom was having a lot of fun. We've still got some time till the wedding, but if you see something you like, you can make a reservation. Oh, they're all so pretty. How many times is she going to change dresses? At least three, right? What? I don't think that's... Oh, you're worried about the money. No worries. We'll pay for one of them. Just one? It wasn't just the wedding. They were asking me to get a better ring, too. This was getting too expensive. If they were going to make all these demands, the least they could do was help me pay for them. Money isn't everything, but I don't know. I was starting to have second thoughts about this. But then... You're worried about money? This is our daughter's big day! Yes, stop being cheap. If you don't stop being so stingy, we can call off the wedding, you know. What? Stop it, you two. Masato, look. Uh, I mean... What did she just say? What was that? Huh? You just called me Masato. What? No, I... I knew it! Something inside me snapped. You're right. Let's just call it off. What? They all froze up. You're kidding me, right? Is this some kind of sick joke? Nope. I'm serious. I'm gonna go now. I'm done. Her parents kept yelling at me. 
but I didn't care anymore. I just ignored them and walked out. Mizuki didn't even try to stop me. She was cheating on me for sure. I got over it pretty quickly though. I went to go see my mom and told her everything that happened. So yeah, sorry mom. Here. I won't be needing this for a while. Don't apologize, dear. This is your life. You do what you think is best. And this money is yours. Keep it. But... Then Mizuki called. I ignored her, but she kept calling me non-stop. So I finally picked her up. What? Hey, what's wrong with you? Come back here right now! You can't just ditch us like this! And we're going to help you pay for the wedding! What's the problem here? Come back here now! She was so loud. My mom could hear everything. I didn't know what to say. Mom walked over and grabbed the phone from me. Hello? This is Yosaka's mother. Let's talk. So you're his mother. Your son is so rude, and this is none of your business. Stay out of it. How is any of this your business? This is their wedding, not yours. Oh, shut up. This is my daughter we're talking about. We're just giving them advice. You do realize this is all your fault, right? You ruined your daughter's wedding. You should be ashamed of yourself. What? Screw you! Mom, stop. Hello, it's me again. Look, my mind is made up. I'm calling off the wedding. That's final. Good call. You're going to regret this. I could hear Mizuki crying in the background as she hung up on me. Anyways, I'd never seen Mom so angry before. I was kind of surprised. I've never seen you like this, Mom. Sorry about that, dear. Want something to eat? Yeah, thanks. Mizuki and her parents stopped calling me after that. After I dumped her, she tried to get with Masato. So she was cheating on you this whole time? Yeah, looks that way. But Masato was never serious about her. He said no and left her as well. He quit the team after that. Mizuki developed an eating disorder from all the stress. She tried to get with the other guys from the cricket team, but they all refused. A few months later, she quit the team. As for her parents, all their friends and neighbors found out about what happened, and things weren't looking good for them. After that, I took some time off from the dating scene, but a few years later, I met someone, and we got married. Things were finally starting to go my way. Anyways, dumping Mizuki was a big decision for me, but I'm glad I did it. If I had married her, it could have been much worse. Life is full of decisions you gotta make. Sometimes it's not easy. But just stay true to yourself and do the right thing. Anyways, glad everything worked out. I'm Tatsuyuki Hasegawa. I'm a chef. I work at a tempura restaurant in the city. We fried the tempura right in front of our customers. It was a pretty popular place. I had great colleagues, too. Work was a lot of fun. I loved it here. Usually I'm wearing chef's clothes, but today, I was wearing a polo. It was parents' day at my son's school. The kids were reading their essays out loud. My dad is a chef. He makes the best food in the world. When I grow up, I want to be just like him. Masaya, I'm touched. The teacher congratulated him on a job well done. The other parents gave him a round of applause. I was really proud of him, but then... That was a terrible essay. After class was over, I headed out into the hallway, but then I heard someone talking in the classroom. I didn't think much of it at first, but this guy was really loud. And he's a chef, right? That's a loser job. He's basically a servant. He was saying to the other parents, Um, are you talking about me? Oh, sorry. I didn't know you were still there. I was just saying. Your son's essay wasn't that good. Uh, okay. Why don't you talk to the teacher about it then? Excuse me. I gotta go to work. He had this mean look on his face. I didn't want anything to do with him, so I decided to let it go and left. But then on my way out... It's a Saturday though. You got work? Sucks to be a blue collar worker. Just ignore him. A friend of mine later told me about him. The guy's name was Nakai. He worked at this big company. He was an elite. He was very condescending. He always bragged about his work and his son. Every time I ran into him, he messed with me. 
Ah, Mr. Hasegawa. Uh, hi. What are you doing here? What do you mean? You're a chef, right? Aren't you supposed to be at work right now? It is the weekend. Oh, I took the day off. A day off, huh? But you barely make any money, right? You sure you can afford to take a day off? None of your business! Wow, relax. Don't raise your voice at me. Poor people are so short-tempered. And so is your son. Huh? Hey, you can say whatever you want about me, but leave my son out of this! My son just beat his son in the foot race. That's probably why he was saying all this. What's this guy's problem? Why can't he just leave me alone? Just ignore him. It's a waste of time. He pissed me off, but I didn't want to cause trouble, so I just walked away. I never wanted to see him again. But then, a week later, when I was at the restaurant... What the? He came to my restaurant! If he sits at the counter, he'll recognize me. Luckily, he requested a table. Phew, that's a relief. That girl he's with, she looks really young. He was with this really young girl. It's probably his subordinate or something. I don't think he saw me, so I went back to work. A few weeks later, I ran into him again. Why do I keep running into him? Is he following me or something? That day, we were all taking our kids camping, and for some reason, Nakai and I were the chaperones. There were professional instructors at the campsite, so our main job was to watch the kids. I didn't really want to talk to him, but I didn't have much of a choice. Just my luck. Whatever. It's just for a day. I tried to focus on my job at hand. It was lunchtime. They were getting ready to make lunch. But then Nakai came up to me and said, You're a chef, right? Start a fire! Uh, I don't know. I think we should leave that to the instructors. Wait, you can't even start a fire? You sure you're a chef? Maybe you just wash the dishes. That's it, isn't it? Ugh. What did he want with me? I didn't have time for this. I ignored him and went back to watching the kids. The kids were making curry. They were almost done. Dad, try it. Okay. How is it? Really good. If you add some butter, it'll add a nice flavor. But I don't think we have any. You like to cook? My dad's a chef. Oh, I see. Can you add the finishing touch then? I got some butter back at the office. Be right back. So I added the finishing touch to the curry. The kids loved it. Nakai was pretty upset. He said it wasn't that good, but his son loved it. So I didn't really care. His son is really nice. Why is he like this? Whatever. The kids seem to have fun, so it's all good. A few days later, I was back at work. I was in a pretty good mood. But then... He showed up again. Ah, uh, not him again! It was Nakai. He was with a different girl than last time. Then I heard my colleagues talking. It's him again. He's always with a different girl. Yeah, this one looks really young. She's probably a hostess or something. He doesn't even hide his wedding ring. Yeah, I feel bad for his wife. Sounds like he was having multiple affairs. I got transferred here just a few months ago, so I didn't know. But turns out he's been doing this for a while now. All my colleagues knew about him. Not sure who the girl was, but one thing was for sure. It wasn't his wife. Whatever. It's none of my business. But then... Wait... Is that... the girl he was with today? I recognized her! Wait, I know! About an hour later, I stepped out of the kitchen and went over to their table. Thanks for coming today. How was your meal? I said to the woman. Nakai seemed very surprised to see me. What? You work here? What are you doing out of the kitchen? Hey there, long time no see. Her name was Emmy Kayano. She was a distant relative. When I was in high school, she tutored me. Nakai's face started to turn blue. You're related to him? Yeah, last time I saw him, it was at my grandmother's funeral. What was that, 15 years ago? Yeah, something like that. Turns out, 
Nakai and Emmy were business partners. They were having a meeting or something, and from the looks of it, Emmy had the upper hand. Nakai was glaring at me the whole time, but I ignored him. I still had work to do, so I couldn't stay that long, but it was nice catching up with her. Nakai seemed really uncomfortable. Hopefully he'll stop messing with me now. But then that weekend, he showed up at my house. Uh, what do you want? Uh, about that woman you saw me with the other night. Please, don't say anything to her. You mean Emmy? Yeah, she's a potential client of mine. She's the manager. I've been working on this for months now, and if I get this deal done, I'm gonna get a big promotion. So please, don't say anything to her. Oh, you mean like how you kept looking down on me? He started stuttering. So do you realize that what you did was wrong? J just please, don't say anything to her, okay? You can't just come to my house and tell me what to do. Apologize to me. Then we'll talk. You little... Don't push it! But then... Ah! His face went pale. What's going on out there? Nakai, what are you doing here? Emmy came out of the living room. Miss Kayano? What are you doing here? Um, I'm his relative. I was just visiting. I heard you guys talking. Is this true? You were looking down on him? No, it's not like that. Nakai started to panic, so she turned to me and asked me what was going on. Nakai tried to stop me, but it was too late. I told her everything. I see. No, it wasn't like that. I... I don't think I can do business with you. And the other night, you said your colleagues would be there too, but you were the only one there. What? I... My guess is, he was trying to hit on her. So he called her out, saying he was having a get-together with a few colleagues, but that was a lie. He just wanted an excuse to take her out. Emmy was pretty, but she was a potential client. What kind of person does that? The thing is, after that little stunt you pulled, I was going to report you to my boss anyways. I don't want to work with you. You tried to hit on me. You creep me out. Please, give me another chance, please! He begged her to give him another chance, but it was no use. I didn't have time for this anymore. Get out of my house, or I'm gonna call the cops! Finally, he left. Glad that's over with. I'm sorry you had to deal with that. It's fine. I love my work. I love being a chef. Good to hear. Being a chef was my calling. Nobody could tell me otherwise. But things were about to get much worse for Nakai. His promotion went out the window, then his wife found out about his affairs. The other day when I passed by his house, the front window was broken. I asked a friend of mine if he knew anything about that. Apparently one of his girlfriends showed up at the house the other day, and they had a huge fight. Looks like he didn't tell her that he was married. And he had other girlfriends at the office as well, and their husbands started suing him for damages. He was up to his neck in debt now. He started begging his friends for money, but things weren't looking good for him. A few months later, his wife left him. He moved out of town. He lost his job and his family disowned him. Not sure what happened to him after that, but not my problem. Just glad he's out of my life. And so, that was that. Things went back to normal after that. I had no idea how to deal with him, so I was just glad he was gone. I hope I never run into anyone like that again. Anyways, glad everything worked out. I'm Ayako Taguchi. I work at a nearby food manufacturing factory as a temporary employee. I really liked my job and my colleagues were nice too. Well, everyone except for one. His name was Mr. Shinohara. He was section chief at a sales department. Hey, you got nothing to do, right? I need about a hundred boxes for that new product. Get it to the factory by lunchtime. A hundred boxes? It was 10 a.m. How am I supposed to do all of that by lunch? I only have two hours left. Ayako, I'll help. You're a full-time employee here. You don't have to do that. Leave the grunt work to the temporary employees. Get back to work. But sir... It's okay, really. 
I headed to the storage and started getting the boxes ready. Mr. Shinohara was always like that to me. He looked down on me because I was a temporary employee here. I thought about quitting many times, but everyone else was really nice to me, so I kept at it. Ayako, you okay? Here, eat this. Let me help you. A few minutes later, one of my colleagues came in and handed me a snack. Ah, oh, so good. Thank you. Come on, let's get this over with. A few of her friends joined us and helped me meet the deadline. The next day, I was at a customer's office with Mr. Sho. Mr. Sho handed him the delivery slip. Thank you. Say hello to Mr. Shinohara for me. Of course. Thank you. Oh, that reminds me. Mr. Shinohara told me about the Valentine's Day event. You guys got the proposal for me? Huh? Valentine's Day event? He looked over at me. He seemed confused, just like I was. What is he talking about? Can I get it in two or three days? I gotta set up a meeting with my boss and stuff. Uh, okay. I'll check on that and get back to you. Sorry for the wait. Mr. Sho grabbed his phone and stepped out to call Mr. Shinohara. Oh, and can you hand this to Mr. Shinohara? What's this? He's always good to me, so it's nothing much, but... Oh, uh, I can't accept it. It's against the rules. I tried to hand it back to him, but then... It's okay. I do this all the time with him. No worries. Just hand it to him, okay? He said to me, I didn't know what to do, so I went back to the car. I wanted to tell him about the package, but he looked really upset. What's wrong? Um, that Valentine's Day event he was talking about. Did you hear anything about that? No, first time hearing about it. I see. Same here. But... Back at the office. I told you about the Valentine's event! I told you to email everyone about it! What? No, you didn't. What? Ugh, you're so useless! I told you! You just forgot! He started yelling at me, but he never told me anything about this. I was pretty sure. Well, thanks to you, we all have to work overtime today. You stay too. This is all your fault, after all. I wanted to say something, but I kept quiet. He grabbed his coat and got up. Where are you going? I got dinner with a potential client. It's not easy sucking up to people, but... Gotta do what you gotta do. I'm out of here. Then he left the office. I'm really sorry. Don't apologize. We all know it's not your fault. It was Mr. Shinohara for sure. You never forget anything. We all know that. Thank you. Two hours later. How about this? It's kind of cute, but I don't know. It needs something else. Something more original. What do you think? I looked at the proposal. It had a bunch of pink balloons and some boxes of chocolate and cookies. It was cute, but it was nothing original. Um, why don't we do something with the wrapping paper? Sometimes people buy stuff simply because the wrapping paper looks pretty. I see. How about if a customer buys 10 or more, they get a special design wrapping paper. It'll increase customer satisfaction and increase sales too. I rarely share my opinion like this. I was kind of nervous. They all started thinking. That's not a bad idea, but who's going to wrap the merchandise? Um, I can do it if you want. I've done it before, so... I see. Maybe you can teach the other employees, too. They decided to give my idea a try. Mr. Sho added my item to the proposal. Thank you for your input. I showed them a few samples after that. They all loved it. The next day, we still had a lot of work to do. I didn't even have time to rest, but uh, I didn't care. I was really enjoying this, but then... Mr. Shinohara came and ruined everything. You again?! You doing this on purpose or something?! He came over and slammed a purchase order on my desk. It's for the product that we were planning to sell on Valentine's Day. Your job is to type in the correct numbers! How hard could that be?! I was in charge of purchasing orders, so I understand why he was trying to blame me, but... I drafted this because of the documents you gave me. I always double-checked my numbers. I rarely made mistakes like this. You talking back to me now? Seriously? I'm just stating facts here. 
You gave me the documents yourself. I even double-checked with you before submitting the purchase order. One lot contains 12 products, so if you want 60 products, you have to order 5 lots. But you wrote down 60 lots, but you said it was fine when I asked you. We even got a call from the factory because the order was really big. I worked really hard on this project, so I wasn't going to let him put this on me. But then... You sure talk a lot. You can't even take responsibility for your own mistakes. Forget it. You're fired. You're useless anyways. What? He stared at me with this mean look on his face. That's it. I couldn't take it anymore. So, you're firing me? You sure? Yeah. Get out of here. Fine. Goodbye. I grabbed my stuff and left the office. Ayako, hold on! Mr. Sho came and stopped me. I believe you! This wasn't you! This isn't right! Let me talk to him! I'm sure I can work something out! Mr. Sho. Then, it was Valentine's Day. It was the first day of the event, but things weren't looking good. I'm sorry! I'll get on it right away! They put out an ad for the Valentine's Day event on one of their flyers. Many customers came for the original wrapping, but Ayako was the only one who knew how to do that, and before she could teach the others, Mr. Shinohara fired her. So the others tried to figure it out, but it didn't go so well. Our customers were very upset. What's going on here? Mr. Takaki! One of the executives walked in. Mr. Shinohara froze up and went silent. So I explained to him what was going on. Okay, so, uh... The woman who came up with the idea. Where is she now? Mr. Shinohara fired her. Is this the same woman you were telling me about the other day? Yes! The day when she got fired, I went to talk to Mr. Takagi myself. He looked over at Mr. Shinohara. I think he had some explaining to do. Look, I can explain! She was so useless, she was always making mistakes, and... And we had to work overtime countless times to clean up after her. I thought we'd be better off without her, so that's why I fired her. I see. You're telling me the truth, right? Absolutely! I only did it for the company! Mr. Takaki grabbed his phone and made a call. It's me. Get me Mr. Asada from Corporate Governance. Hello? There's something I'd like you to check. After talking on the phone for a few minutes, he told me to get on a computer and open this file in one of the public folders. It was a video file of the office. It was Ayako and Mr. Shinohara. Sir, about this purchase order. You sure this is right? You might want to check the lot size first. Shut up! You're just a temporary employee here! Nobody cares about what you think! Just do as I say! Mr. Shinohara was yelling at her. What the? How did this- We installed security cameras in the office, remember? I sent out an email. You didn't get it? Uh- Yeah. They installed it on the day we had to work overtime to clean up after your mess, remember? Oh wait! You were out having drinks with a client, so I guess you don't. Oh right, about that. Who were you having drinks with? I... 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 I checked your schedule. I called the company, but they said they didn't have any meetings scheduled with you that day. <coughs> Shinohara? It looks to me that you're the useless one here. Why did you fire her? She's ten times more useful than you are. I... I think we're done here. Uh... Oh, and one last thing. The guys at Corporate Governance. They've been getting a lot of complaints about you recently. It's not looking good for you. You better start packing your things. He collapsed on the floor. After that, he got demoted. Then a few months later, he quit the company. Sir, can she come back now? Our customers are waiting for her. Of course. She's out on paid leave right now, right? Bring her back right away. Yes, sir! So I called Ayako and left the office. Mr. Takagi had to drag Mr. Shinohara that, out of the room. He got demoted. He looked pathetic. Then a few months Good later, riddance. he quit the company. I better hurry. The customers are waiting! About an hour later, 
I was back on my job. I was at the department store wrapping boxes of chocolate for our customers. Mr. Sho called me a few days ago saying he had a plan. So I waited near the department store waiting for his call. I guess his plan worked. Here you go. So pretty. Thank you. Look, this is blowing up on Twitter. Oh, wow. Everyone was looking out for me. I was really grateful for that. Is that... It was Mr. Sho. He was running towards us. I waved towards him. It was Valentine's Day. After work, I'm gonna give him a box of chocolates. I started to blush as I got back to work. Anyways, glad everything worked out. I'm Makoto Sato. I'm 24. I worked as a temporary employee for this clothing company. I always had an interest in fashion. I started working here when I was in college. After graduation, they told me I could keep working here. So I did. I wanted to be an official employee someday, so I worked really hard every day. I worked at one of the biggest stores in the franchise. I was the assistant manager there. I loved fashion, and I've been working here since I was a student, so I really liked it here. I loved my job. Good morning. Morning. The new product that's coming out today, I love that character. Oh, I can't wait. Oh yeah? You want to make the props then? That would be really helpful. Really? For sure. I'd love to. Everyone here was really nice, and they all seemed to enjoy working here. But I had a problem. We recently got a new manager, Sawayama, and we didn't really get along. He was an official employee, so he looked down on me. He always made me do the grunt work, even things that were his responsibility. Sato, get started on next month's schedule for the part-time employees. Huh? I thought that was your job. I got other stuff to do, okay? You're just a temporary employee. Just do as I say. But, uh... Get to work. Don't make me say it twice. I didn't even know what to say to him. He treated me like his servant. He was like this to everyone, though. But he was especially a big jerk to me. He made me do almost everything around the store. I mean, I'm sure he had other stuff to do, but he rarely came out of his office. He did come out from time to time, but he hated dealing with customers. I loved this job, but I really didn't enjoy working with him. At one of the company meetings, I complained about him to one of my colleagues. That sucks, but his dad is a board member. Wait, seriously? Yeah, so just stay out of his way. I see. So that's why he's like this. It all started to make sense now. I started as a part-time employee here, so I was extra nice to the part-time employees. I wanted them to stay here for as long as possible, and I think they liked me too. Mr. Makoto, I'm done with the new shirts. Ah, great! Thank you! Looks good! <laughs> thanks! This is Oria Sato. He was a college student. We had the same last name, so we called each other by our first names. And so did everyone else. And we were about the same age. We were good friends. Look! The new undergarment we just got! It's blowing up on social media! Oh yeah? Let me see. Oh, I saw this! We're getting a lot of likes on this one. Ah, nice. I'm gonna order some more then. Thanks for the heads up. Everyone was always trying to help out, but nobody liked Sawayama, so they usually came to me with new ideas. Here's the purchase order. I ordered some extra shirts. Ugh, whatever. What was his problem? Whatever. At least he didn't yell at me this time. Turns out, he knew about the positive feedback on social media, so he was planning to order more anyways. So why was he in a bad mood? I was confused. But then Oria told me, He's just jealous because everyone comes to you and not him. He told me this once. What? But that's because he's a jerk to everyone. I know, right? 
I didn't know what to do with him. Oh well. At least everyone else is nice. Then one day, I saw this middle-aged man wandering around in the store. He looked like he needed some help. So I asked him if I could help him find something. He said he was looking for a gift for his son. I actually work in the fashion industry too, but I got a desk job, so I don't know much about fashion. I see. And the clothes we sell? They're very... unique. Too unique, if you ask me. I see. What does he usually wear? I asked him a few questions about his son. Then I made a few suggestions on what to get him. He ended up buying a shirt, a pair of jeans, and some room wear. Thank you very much. I wish we had employees like you at our company. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. You too. Glad I could be of help. I loved seeing my customers smile. I didn't like my boss, but other than that, I really loved it here. But then one day, something happened. What the? We got this huge shipment of gloves and beanies. I checked the purchase order. Someone added an extra zero in the lot size field. We never got this many gloves and beanies. We could only sell them during the winter. Sawayama started freaking out. Who did this? Seriously? Uh, you don't remember? It was you. You helped with the product design or something, so you said you'd take charge on this one. It was Sawayama. He was the one that messed up. I was the assistant manager, so it was my job to double check his numbers. But when I asked him for the purchase order... I don't need you to check my work! Get lost! Then he submitted the order. But... <laughs> you didn't check! This is your fault! Yes! This is your fault, not mine! What? I asked you for the purchase order, but you didn't let me check! Yeah, I saw that too! You told him to get lost! What? Who do you think you're talking to? Stay out of this! The others took my side, but he didn't care. He wasn't going to take responsibility for this! Look, what's done is done! Let's focus on what to do with these! Shut up! This is your fault! You figure it out! Then he went back to his office. But then, someone from the sales department came to see me. Sawayama probably told them that this was my fault. I tried to explain to them what happened. That this was not my fault. I wasn't going to let him pin this on me. The guy from the sales department believed me. But then, Sawayama's dad came into the picture. My son wouldn't make a mistake like this. He refused to believe that this was his son's fault. Then things got even worse from there. After the incident, Sawayama started messing with me on purpose. He sent out wrong purchase orders under my name. He told the higher-ups that the customers were complaining about me. He was trying to make me quit. It was pretty obvious. He blamed me for all of his mistakes. They weren't big mistakes or anything, but it happened so often. After a while, the higher-ups stopped caring. I guess they didn't have time to hear me out every time something like this happened. Is there anything I can do? I was exhausted. Then... Hey! You're fired! Your contract is almost up. You're useless. Get lost! Ugh! My contract was over in a few weeks, and he made it very clear that I wasn't welcome here anymore. Why are you getting fired? This makes no sense! It's okay. I don't want to work for him anymore anyways. I had no choice but to leave the company. After that, I started looking for a new job in the fashion industry. I still liked clothes, and this is all I knew. But then I found out that Sawayama and his dad had spread bad rumors about me to the other business owners. I managed to get a few interviews, but... Oh, I've heard about you. It wasn't looking good for me. I didn't know what to do anymore. 
Then, a few minutes later, I got another interview. It was a relatively new company. I really liked their unique design. Congrats! I'm sure you'll get the job. I hope so. I was talking to Oria on the phone. I still kept in touch with him. I was talking to him on the phone the day before the interview. No worries. You'll be fine. I have a feeling. <laughs> okay. I'm serious. Go get him. Thanks, man. I felt much better after talking to him. Then the next day... Hello. Thanks for making the time to see me. As soon as I sat down, the interviewer said to me, Ah, Mr. Sato. I've heard about you. Oh, not this again. Oh well, I guess I'm screwed. But then he got up and said, Be right back. Then he left the room. Then someone else came into the room. I couldn't believe it! So, we meet again. Wait, I know you! It was that customer that came into my store the other day! Uh, wait, what's going on? Well, um, I'm the head of HR. I'm Takahashi. It's good to see you again. Oh, I didn't even know what to say! I heard the rumors about you, but seeing you the other day, I just didn't think they were true. So I went to the store again, after you quit. Thank you, sir! I was so touched! I tried really hard not to cry! There, I ran into Oria. He remembered me, so he started talking to me, and he told me everything. I see. That's why... That's why he was so confident! He should have just told me! He was very worried about you. Him and all of his colleagues. I meant it when I said that I wanted employees like you. So when I saw your application, I was thrilled. So... Will you come work for us? Oh, thank you so much, sir! Thank you! I take that as a yes? Of course! Thank you so much! And so, I landed the job! All my hard work over the years finally paid off! Their products were very unique, and so were the customers that came here! It was challenging, but it was also really fun helping them find the one! Oh, and Oria quit his old job and came to work for us. It's good to be working with you again. The store was a mess after you left. After I left, most of the part-time employees quit. Sawayama couldn't blame others for his mistakes anymore. He was screwed. Then they conducted an internal investigation on him and his father. Sawayama got demoted and his father was no longer a board member. Things got really awkward for him. He ended up leaving the company a few months later. He tried to get a new job, but by that time, everyone knew about what he did. So it wasn't looking good for him. Good riddance. I guess they got what they deserved. Yes. I hope I never see them again. A few months later, Oria told me that he saw them at the unemployment office. Sucks for them, but oh well. Not my problem. I really liked my new job. Everyone here was very nice. I loved it here. And just the other day, Mr. Takahashi told me that he was thinking about promoting me to manager soon. Things were finally starting to look up for me. Welcome! It was a rough couple of months, but glad everything worked out. I'm Chisato Katayama. I attend a private school in my hometown. I get pretty decent grades. My parents weren't wealthy, but they both worked really hard to put me through school. But then, when I was in 11th grade, something happened. Dad got laid off. He worked there for 20 years, but they let him go, just like that. Dad got a new job, but he was making much less now. Then my mom, she got sick and got hospitalized. Ouch! 
You okay? Yeah, it's just a cut. I'm fine. After Mom got sick, I started cooking for both of us. I was pretty bad at it, though. The lunch I made was pretty lame. Sometimes I just packed some rice in a box, nothing more. It was kind of embarrassing, though. All the other kids brought delicious-looking lunch boxes, but that wasn't all. When I go to school one day, everyone was studying. Oh, right, we've got a math quiz today. The math teacher was really strict. If you failed one of her quizzes, you got detention, so everyone studied like crazy. So I opened my textbook to cram, but then... Why are you studying? I thought you were smart, Chisato. Oh, right. Your family is poor, so you can't turn on the lights at night. So you have to study at school. I get it. This is Tatsuya Sugawa. His dad was the principal here. He was so condescending. He was a jerk. It all started after midterms this year. I always studied hard to make my parents proud. And finally, yes, I came in first place. I finally came in first place. But then this pissed him off. Chisato, right? Huh? Yeah. You think you're pretty smart, don't you? I have no idea what to say to him. You poor piece of crap. You think you're smarter than me? Think again! After that, he started messing with me every chance he got. He was such a jerk. How old is your mechanical pencil? How poor are you? <laughs> and whenever he got better grades than me, Sorry, good luck next time! It's not fair, though. I get to study in a warm room with a big desk. You probably don't even have a desk. What do you use, cardboard? <laughs> I wanted to say something, but I was too scared of him, so I never said anything. And he wasn't the only problem. Lunchtime. I took out my lunchbox and started eating. Most kids here went to the cafeteria for lunch. My friends always asked me to come with them, but money was tight, so I always ate alone in the classroom. I didn't want my friends seeing this. It was too embarrassing. But then, he showed up. Ah, uh, not again! I really wanted those omelets. What? You got a problem? The sandwich is pretty good, you know. Oh, right. Thanks. He was right. It was pretty good. Much better than my food. Why does he always ask me to trade with him? It didn't really make sense, but oh well. Then one night, it was past 8 p.m. I was headed home from work when I heard a little boy crying. What the? I looked over to see what was going on. Come on, stop it! That's enough! It was Satoru. He was with a little boy. I ran up to them and got between them. Chisato! You're upsetting him! What are you doing? Huh? That's my little brother. Huh? I called the maid. Come on, she's coming to pick us up. Maid? Huh? I guess his family was wealthy. I had no idea. I mean, I gotta apologize to him. I didn't know he was your little brother. Oh, no worries. You probably thought I was picking on some random kid, right? Well, I, uh, I'm sorry. Hey, you eating three meals a day? Did you finish the sandwich I gave you? Huh? Uh, yeah. But you collapsed the other day during P.E. I heard your family was broke now. Wait, is that why you keep coming up to me during lunch? What? No. I just don't like the lunch they give me, that's all. It's too fancy for me. He looked the other way. His ears were blushing. So you're saying my lunch isn't fancy? Oh, uh... <laughs> I laughed out loud. It's been a while since I did that. Ah, I think that's your ride. Yeah, you want a lift? Oh, I'm good. I live right there, so... All right, get home safe. Okay, thanks. They got in their car and left. I was starting to blush a little. But then, the next day, Mom got sick again. I had to start taking care of her at home. Sorry about this, dear. Don't apologize, Mom. It's fine. I gotta go to school now. I put some food and drinks on the table and headed to school. She was feeling much better these days. Oh, well. It's getting a bit cold outside, so maybe that's why. 
<laughs> when I got to school, the results of the final exams were up on the wall. My grades were going down the drain. I honestly didn't have enough time to study these days. <laughs> Gisato, hey! Too bad about your grades. Ugh, not him. Well, it was bound to happen. I mean, you study using a desk made of cardboard, right? Sucks to be poor. Stop. But you did your best, so... <laughs> Keep your head up. Let's give her a round of applause. But then... Tatsuya, that's enough. Sadaru slammed his desk and got up. Who do you think you are, huh? Stop talking about her like that. What? You stay out of this. Apologize to her. What? Why should I? I earned this grade. I worked hard for this. Fine, fine. How about this then? If I get a better grade than you on the next math quiz, you gotta apologize to Shato. That's impossible. Satoru was always skipping class, and he wasn't very smart. Fine, but if I win, you gotta apologize to me and be my slave for the rest of the year. Fine, we got a deal. You're gonna regret this. Tatsuya walked out of the classroom with a smirk on his face. Satoru, what have you done? What? You think I'm gonna lose? No, but... Tutor me, okay? I'm not that dumb. I know I can beat him. Lunch break. I see. I get it. So, I started tutoring him during lunch break. You're a really good teacher. I actually get it. Oh, good. I was glad to hear that, but he was a quick learner too. Maybe he's not as dumb as I thought. So I started tutoring every chance I got. Turns out, Satoru was actually really smart. He just never tried. I had no idea. Then, a few weeks later, the test results were out. Wow, so close. Ha! Huh, what now, loser? Ugh. Satoru got the same grade as me. But Tatsuya beat us by three points. Come on, apologize to me. We had a deal. Fine. Satoru, don't. We had a deal. But then another student stood up. You don't have to apologize to him. His name was Makatu Otsuka. He was the quiet type. He always kept to himself. He was one of the smartest kids in class. I've never seen him speak up like this before. The thing is, I helped him cheat. He threatened me. I had no choice. Wait, stop lying. I'm not lying. Makoto's voice was shaking, but he kept going. I didn't know him that well, but turns out he didn't have a father. It was just him and his mom. He was here on a full scholarship, but... Your family is poor, right? Show me your answers then. Then get some questions wrong on purpose before you hand it in. If not, I'm gonna get your scholarship revoked. Tatsuya was blackmailing him. His father was the principal, but there was no way he could do that. And Makoto knew that, but he was still scared. So he did what he told him to do. When he heard about the deal Satoru made with Tatsuya, he told him everything. There's no way you can win. Just stop. Hell no. He disrespected my friend. I'm not gonna let it slide. I'll beat him, you see. But what about you? You should stop helping him. Stop letting him run all over you. you gotta stand up for yourself, man. I know, but what if he's not bluffing, you know? I can't risk it. Whatever. Are you gonna tell the others about this? If you want me to, sure. If you want me to keep quiet, then I won't say anything. Satoru stood up for the right thing! And he didn't run away! Tatsuya, I'm not gonna let you run all over me anymore! Stop lying! You poor piece of crap! I actually have you on tape! Want me to play it right now? You little... Come here! Uh! Stop it already. You're just gonna make things worse for yourself. Uh! Screw you! Don't tell my dad about this! He ran out of the classroom. You okay? Yeah, sorry about all this. And thank you. Sure. Anyways, how did you get a 96, man? You're so smart. But you came so close. You should be proud of yourself. Thank you for standing up for me. 
Whatever. It's nothing. Sodoru turned the other way. He was blushing. Later, Makoto decided to come clean. He told the teacher everything. A few weeks later, the principal was forced to resign. Hatsuya was suspended. He came back after a while, but everyone stopped talking to him. Things got really awkward, and he ended up quitting school. And his dad was out of a job now. Things weren't looking good for him and his family. As for me, my mom was feeling much better. Turns out Satoru's dad was a famous doctor, and he introduced me to a good doctor who specialized in my mom's condition. I was so grateful for him. Then one day after school... For this one, use this formula. I see. With Tatsuya gone, Makoto was back to being the smartest kid in class. And as for Satoru... <sighs> everyone used to kind of be scared of him, but after the incident with Tatsuya, everyone wanted to be friends with him. Satoru, there's a math quiz tomorrow. Oh, don't care. Oh, come on, you're smart. You just gotta try. Here, I'll give you my omelet. For real? Get a room, you two! Huh? It's not like that! Yeah, shut up, Makoto. <laughs> Whatever! Things were finally back to normal. Glad everything worked out. Time to get back to work.